All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, uh, we're going to go over how to bounce chemical equations. And I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. And then I'm going to show you another way of using a calculator, uh, mainly a TI-83 or 84, 80-something, uh, uh, as long as it can do matrices. So I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. And then I'll show you how to use a calculator. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right, here's the uh, first set of problems that we're going to look at. I'm going to turn off the uh, uh, firing uh, mouse. That way it's not going to be distracting. All right, now remember one thing that you need to know in balancing a chemical equation is that you're actually balancing the atoms. For example, make sure that you understand how many atoms you have of each particular element. You have three carbons here. You have eight hydrogens here, you have two oxygens here, you have one carbon here because there's not a number here, so that's one carbon. The one's not written because it's understood. You have two oxygens here, two hydrogens here, and one oxygen here. Now, in balancing, one thing that you will take to heart and always remember is to never start with the oxygens. If you have oxygen, always do it last. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Now, how many carbons do I have on the left side? Now, let me make sure you understand how I know to call this the left side. Remember, the left side uh, is the side that your reactants go, meaning uh, you look where the arrow is, and basically you're looking at it like, well, here, this is the left side, because that's on this side. So, anyway... On the left side, you have these guys. On the right side, you have these guys. So what we need to do is make sure they balance. Here you have three carbons, but on the right side, you've only got one carbon. So we need to put a three here. Okay. In doing so, that gives us the three carbons. Now, look at your hydrogens. Here you have eight hydrogens. On this side, you have two. So what we're going to do is, in order to get eight hydrogens like we have on the left here, to get eight hydrogens on the right, we are going to put a four here. Now what happens is this. These big numbers, which are basically coefficients, are going to multiply uh, the bottom subscripts, so the bottom numbers. So that four times two there is eight. So we now have eight hydrogens on the right side and we have eight hydrogens on the left. The only thing that is uh, remaining is the oxygens, which is the last thing, which is what we want to do. Now on the left side we have a total of two. And on the right side, which is the product side, I have six plus four. Well, six plus four is ten. So this number here needs to be a five. Now, we have a blank here, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 1. Now, if you look, everything is balanced. I have 3 carbons, I have 8 hydrogens, and I have 10 oxygens. So look, 3 carbons, 8 hydrogens, and 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 1 is 4, 6 plus 4 is 10. So we are balanced. Now, let me show you how to use a TI-83 calculator to balance this. Let me get these moved out of the way here. Okay, so I'm going to delete these. Okay, let's go back up and look at the problem. Now, let me show you how to do this. Let me minimize this and open up a TI-83 calculator. Okay, here we go. The TI-83 lamp. It is open. And here's the problem. Now, one thing that we're, I'm going to show and try to explain to you is how to set up a matrix C's. Okay, uh, to work this problem. Well, first thing we do is we need to make a grid. Okay, so wherever I see a plus sign, I'm going to put a straight line down. Okay, and wherever I see an, the arrow, the yield sign, I'm going to put a straight line down. Okay, so that ends up giving me three lines, so to speak. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put one line down here in the front. Okay, and one down here at the end. Now, I'm going to draw a long line across. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Draw a long line across. Now for the beginning, this is good. This helps me get everything started. Whoops. I ran out of room. Now, 
let's list the individual atoms. Uh, also keep in mind that sometimes you can do this listing the individual polyatomic ions if you know what those are. Uh, maybe in the later videos I will explain those as well. But this is my first video on balancing equations using uh, basically your hand skills, your hand and mental skills versus using a TI-83 calculator. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to try to list the individual atoms, meaning I've got carbon here, okay, I've got hydrogen here, and the last thing that I have is oxygen. Now remember, if you're doing this uh, by the calculator right now, you don't know these numbers, but the answer is 1, 5, 3, and 4, okay? Now, I'm going to blank these out, so you know, you won't be tempted to want to cheat and say, oh, I figured it out. Okay. Anyway, so I've got those blanked out. Let's get this figured out. Now, this means carbon. Now, how many carbons are here in the unbalanced equation? Well, there's three. Okay. Now, how many carbons are here on this O2? Well, there's none, so you put a zero. Now, how many carbons are here? Well, there's only one, so we'll put a one there. And how many carbons are here on the water? Well, none, so you put a zero. Now, here on the hydrogens, how many are there? Well, there are eight here, okay? So you put an eight there. Now here, how many oxygens? I see two oxygens. This is a two. Oh, my bad. Two oxygens, but I don't see any hydrogens. So I'm going to put a zero. Sorry. I started daydreaming. Anyway, <laughs> how many hydrogens are here? Well, there's none, so I'm going to put a zero as well. But here on the water, how many hydrogens? I see two. So we're going to put a two right here. Okay, we're done with that. Now, oxygens, finally, last. All right, <clears throat> I have no oxygens there, so zero. I have uh, two oxygens there. Okay, I have two oxygens there, and I have one oxygen here. Now that gives me a matrix C's. Now any of you who have not had say Algebra 2 or maybe Algebra 1 or uh, Linear Algebra in college then this may be a little confusing to you so just watch on the calculator really closely. Now one thing I want you to realize about this matrix is this matrix is a 3 by 4. It's 3 because there's 3 rows here the C, the H, and the O and there is 4 columns. Uh, one for this reactant, one for this reactant, one for this product, and one for this product. So let's go ahead and punch this into the calculator. Now first thing you need to do is you need to find where the matrix key is on your calculator. Now on a TI-83 plus it's uh, up above the X negative 1 and yellow so I'm going to hit the yellow key second matrix and I'm going to go to edit. Okay. Now I always put all my matrix in A. That's just me. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter. Now remember, the size is rows by columns, so this one is a 3 by 4. Hit 3, press enter. Next, type 4. Uh, whoops, my bad. Next, after you press enter, type in 4, and voila, you've got a 3 by 4. Now let's enter in the numbers. 3, enter, 0, enter, 1, enter, and finally, the last number here, in this row is a zero, so I'm going to type in a zero. Zero. Boom. The top has been entered. Now the next one. I've got eight, so I'm going to type in eight in the second one. Then zero, enter. Now what's the, th oh, whoops, now what's the third one? Uh, the third one in that row is the zero, so I'm going to type in a zero, enter, and the last one in that row is the two. So I'm going to type in the two, then enter. Finally that brings up the bottom row. I see zero right here. So zero, enter, the two, enter, uh, the other two, whoops, I never did finish that one, two, enter, then two, again, enter, and finally the last number of the column, one, enter. Now that should be correct. Now let's go back and check our columns. I see three, eight, O oh in the calculator. Here is three, eight, and O oh here. I see in this row 002, in this row I see 002, in this one I see 102, and here I have 102. And let's check our last column, 021, 021. All right, so we're done entering the matrix in. Now once you get this entered in, hit second quit to back out of your matrix. What's funny is we got to go back into the matrix now, so hit second, 
matrix, which is the second x negative 1, uh, we're going to go to the math function in that column and go down to RREF. Now the RREF stands for row reduce echelon form. So let's pick that, enter, and notice it throws us back out to the main screen, which is good. But now we got to go back to matrix again. So second, matrix, go over, whoops, my bad, stay at names, and then choose the 3 by 4 that you entered in. So there's the 3 by 4, close your parentheses, now press enter. And if you look, we get some numbers here in the end. Okay, but notice that these numbers in the end have decimals. They're not pretty numbers, so we need to change them to fractions. On the TI-83+, Plus, you hit the math button here. The first option uh, there is fraction, so hit enter. Notice you see answer with fraction, so let's press enter one more time, and boom, we've got the answer here. But the only problem is, is that we do not need fractions in chemistry from balancing equations. So we need whole numbers. Now look at the common denominator. One-fourth, five-fourths, three-fourths. Common denominator is four. We're going to multiply everything by four. And look what happens. Notice that we get a nice column, nice last column of numbers. One, five, negative three. And here we have a diagonal of four. Now let me show you what you're going to do with these numbers. Okay, remember those numbers. One, five, negative three, and four. Well, those numbers will go up here. I had 1, I had 5, now let's look at that again, I had 1, 5, now th you see the negative here, that negative sign is there simply to tell you in chemistry that this number is on the other side of this yield sign. So when you write the, write the number here, do not put the negative sign with it, just go ahead and put the 3 there. Now the last number, Notice that there is, not, there is not a last number in this column, but you do have a diagonal of 4. Whatever the number is in the diagonal is the number that will go in the last position of the balanced equation. And lo and behold, we have the same answer that we did before. Okay, well guys, I hope this was helpful. Now remember, you can do a 3x4, uh, no problem, and you can do a 4x4. Four four. Just remember, your rows cannot be more than your columns. I mean, you cannot do a 5x4 on a TI-83 calculator. Anyway guys, I hope the video was helpful, and if it was, great. And if not, uh, well, send me a message and I will try to write one a little bit more clear. Alright guys, y'all have a great night. Bye-bye.